a good morning, good evening, and good uh, late night, uh, beginning of the morning uh, for the people joining us from uh, Asia. Uh, today, we will be speaking about our recent uh, partnership with MongoDB and how we can together uh, propose uh, to the market, either in the enterprise or in the service provider business, ways to um, for service providers to sell MongoDB and uh, and for enterprise the way to automate uh, for private cloud MongoDB. So uh, we have with us today a special guest, uh, William Wynn, Global OEM Cloud Sales in uh, MongoDB, based in uh, US. Uh, myself, I am Ahmed Amni, uh, based in France, uh, Vice President of Business Development and Alliances. And we have as well with us uh, Theodoros uh, Philippidis, uh, based in Greece, who is our solution architect and uh, working on that, who will be making the, all the, managing all the technical questions and the technical demos. Today, we will be speaking first about what Virtuoso, MongoDB, our partnership, uh, the challenges uh, every single one of you is facing, depending on the use case on using uh, uh, database uh, uh, MongoDB. And then we will be presenting the solution, which is Virtuoso Application Platform. We will be doing a demo. And then from there, that we will be having a Q&A session. We will try to squeeze the time of presentation to give enough time for the demo to show you the solution and how we can use the solution. And then we will be having the Q&A session. Feel free to uh, post all the questions in the Q&A. Uh, the more questions we have, the better it is. So you can um, put uh, all the questions in the Q&A section uh, of the chat, and uh, we would be happy to answer all your questions. Um, a bit of uh, presentation uh, for, uh, about Virtuoso for the people who are first uh, first time uh, uh, knowing about us or hearing about us. Major player in application management and infrastructure management. We provide we provide the full stack cloud solutions um, uh, that are going from YAS to PaaS, and with this tool we can create uh, X as a service. At 24 years into the business, we are not newcomers. We do understand uh, the business very, very well. Uh, 700,000 uh, virtualized environments running on top of our solutions. We are 300 uh, employees based uh, worldwide. So we have a sales team present everywhere and we have support and professional services teams as well um, uh, present in all the countries where you, uh, where you, where you see in the map. Uh, we will concentrate in this call on the application management. Um, this is where for um, the discussion of today, the MongoDB automation. And we have here a solution called Virtuoso Application Platform. So what is Virtuoso Application Platform? It is a, a platform as a service um, container for containerized applications. So any uh, customer, either a service provider providing application as a service or a uh, an enterprise who wants to have a solution that helps with multi-cloud enablement of containerized applications and databases. Um, so the Virtuoso application platform is the solution for this. Um, as you can see, uh, it's a full container. Uh, full container. It speaks all the um, programming languages. So we make uh, DevOps uh, easy to manage. Um, so you can program with the language you want and it gives possibility to automate cluster and uh, uh, scale uh, scaling auto horizontally and vertically all the applications that you have on top of any cloud. So you just need to have the infrastructure underneath and you can and you can do it. Available as public, private, hybrid, or multi-cloud uh, um, deployments. It can be deployed on premise, it can be deployed on the cloud. Uh, it's hardware agnostic. Um, it can run on top of your uh, infrastructure of today. Uh, even if you want to run it on top of Permetal, which is one of our uh, best particularities. Uh, without further waiting, I will turn the the the, the speech to uh, to Will, who will be speaking about MongoDB and our partnership, and then we will take it back again from from the virtual side. Thanks, Ahmed. Um, appreciate you all joining. Will win again here from MongoDB, and uh, we're super excited about our partnership with Virtuoso. Um, what I want to do over a few slides here is just give everybody a super high level overview of Mongo that will then tie into the partnership with Virtuoso. So Ahmed tells me that everybody in the world is familiar with MongoDB, and I think that may be the case today, but just a little bit of history. Uh, Mongo has been around actually for 17 years, and we got started by a couple of developers. And at that time, it was an open source project, and it wasn't the, the hyperscalers in the public cloud today were just not a thing. 
And so what they wanted to do was just allow developers to stand up applications and tools very quickly, easily, and cheaply. And that just simply wasn't capable with relational databases and the providers that were out there today. So they built uh, what's commonly called a document model, JSON-like database. And that data model is just an easier way of working with data, whether it's a piece of structured data, semi-unstructured or completely unstructured. And who would know that with open APIs, that that base core infrastructure methodology would be perfect as the world turned into mobile, IoT, generative AI, and things of that nature. And while you scale that out, uh, it just makes things easier to work with from a global perspective. There's some kind of factoids here on the left, but I want to focus on the bottom left, which is 500 million plus downloads of MongoDB. When I came on in 2018, there were 2 million downloads of MongoDB, and now it's over 500 million. And so obviously we're very popular, but we want to be able to serve the folks that use Mongo. And as Ahmed was speaking to, there are a lot of people that use Mongo that just aren't certain how to stand up just, you know, different things and, and work with providers to do so. So Ahmed, if you could go to the next slide. Yeah, sure. So what, what are our problem statement is and what we're trying to resolve outside of touching all of the folks that are using Mongo and, and solving any you know, business problems is that the world has turned into just this kind of spaghetti, super complicated IT stack that includes all of these different technologies that requires some type of joins, some types of ETLs to make all of this stuff work. And that is just simply complicated. And so as we've continued to grow, we've taken our growth and the revenue that we have and we put it back into the product to create a developer data platform that not only does JSON documents, but does other types of technologies where these niche kind of database or data players are at, where you can use all of these under one common platform. And so that's, that's what we're trying to solve and we continue to add in features into that as we continue to grow. And that to us just makes things easier because again, at the end of the day, we want to make users and developers and businesses that we just want to make things easier for people. Um, Ahmed, can you go to the next slide? Sure. Okay, people ask all the time, what are common use cases with Mongo? And because we are a general purpose database, we actually get used for a number of different things, which I'll get into on my last slide here shortly in our sales plays. But where we, where we really, really, really shine is an operational data store. So taking all of that data and putting it into one place. And then when you have these disparate type data sets that need to scale elastically or extensively, that's also where our performant database is just better than the rest. And so you can work your way from the left of an operational single view all the way out to the right. But when you have goobers amounts of different types of disparate data sets, Mongo can shine in all of those. And we have grown from, you know, just using completely unstructured data sets and, you know, kind of best folk pro uh, uh, use cases or projects to more enterprise class replacements. So Ahmed, my last slide, please. Sure. What I'm showing you here is actually Mongo's go-to-market strategy. And so as you work your way from the left column on the left of uh, using Mongo or not down towards the bottom of a new application or an existing application, these are four sales plays that we work with um, to our customers, our partners and providers, and we're working in conjunction with Virtuoso to do the same. And so when somebody, when you focus on the bottom left, when somebody's launching something, we are often being used to do that in a non-prod test type environment. And this is typically done with Mongo Community, our open source tool. And oftentimes it's done on a very old version of that, of that community license, which actually works very well. Um, but once you move that into production and you work your way to, to the right side, most people today don't wanna to build data centers and they want to distribute 
you know, these types of workloads over providers. And so we call that a, a migrate of moving those workloads from self-managed Mongo to that being managed by others and into the cloud or into multi-clouds. And so that's a big, big play for us. And most of the, the folks that use Mongo today are moving to companies like Virtuoso to do that. However, <laughs> however, uh, we are oftentimes being selected for new stacks because now we've become more of a general purpose database with all of these different features and functionalities. And I don't think this is going to be a surprise to anybody who's on the line here, including the Virtuoso team. But it's not common that, you know, people go to, let's call it an Oracle to, to stand up new applications today or legacy type of SQL services if they have a choice. And, and most people, I shouldn't say most people today, but uh, lots of users are getting very frustrated with turnkey kind of cloud specific um, locked in solutions for a specific hyperscaler. And so that freedom and flexibility to really run anywhere has been um, a big pull for us too, where they don't want to use only specifically what that cloud provider provides in a hyperscaler. And I'm sure most of you on the line are semi frustrated or completely frustrated with that too. So we'll come back to uh, answering some questions later, but uh, Ahmed, can I turn it back to you and Teo now? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so now we have an, an, an understanding of Virtuoso application platform, an understanding of MongoDB and the use, you, the use cases of MongoDB, either if you are a service provider who wants to propose MongoDB as a service to the market, so what you can propose to them and what the, this market is using, using MongoDB for, or um, uh, or for an enterprise who wants to use uh, in a private cloud manner, what are the use cases that are that are usually used in order to uh, for for MongoDB? Now we would be going to the challenges you are facing, um, and we would be dividing the challenges into two sections: one for private cloud, one for the enterprises, uh, who are like for the databases administrators who are with us. And then we will be going as well for the service providers that want to provide a MongoDB as a service and the challenges today that they are facing. Um, so when it comes to a, a private cloud, one of the most common um, uh, challenge is uh, infrastructure management. It's time consuming. It's a manual effort. Each time you want to spin a new database, you need to spin a VM and then uh, install the database, uh, the infrastructure um, you sometimes you don't find the infrastructure, so it's and each time you want to have to, to like imagine you have one hundred databases and you want to do upgrade of these one hundred databases from a version to another one. Uh, it takes a lot of time. It's a big effort, and sometimes in the private clouds, the companies decide to keep those databases in an outdated uh, in an outdated uh, version that and they don't benefit from all the cool new features that um, MongoDB is bringing uh, to the table by from each version to each version. Uh, another one is scalability and elasticity. So it having an auto vertical and horizontal scaling um, and as well adapting to the system uh, user behavior in events. So I, uh, I, am, I am a company, I do have my database uh, running from 8 to, to uh, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, I don't want these resources to be consumed at night, so I can do all this auto uh, and vertical and horizontal scaling. But today, what the, most of the customers are doing is they put it in a VM, and this VM is allocating that RAM and that storage, and they cannot uh, change it or they cannot resize it uh, automatically. Or it's complicated. We need to put scripts and everything. Security and compliance, of course, um, uh, isolating everything, making sure that the networking is isolated, making sure that we have all the firewalls, making sure that all the network policies are in place. It's difficult sometimes to manage uh, if we if we forget one line of code in some switch or in some router. It uh, make it uh, it makes it uh, difficult to manage. Isolation as well is very very important. Disaster recovery, uh, very important. Uh, if I have one uh, one one node uh, going down, I need to have like one cluster. Uh, creating those clusters are not uh, are not easy. Uh, so the companies are looking for any. A solution that can help them to do auto clustering and backups with one click. 
Uh, and the last point is orchestration and automation. And this is the purpose of the build of virtual application platform for private cloud. So we are coming here as an orchestrator and automator for all the applications out there, including, of course, uh, databases and MongoDB specifically. Uh, so I can I can see all my applications. I can see all my applications running on top of all the clouds. I can migrate them from one point to another point with one click. I can update the versions. I can do all the orchestrations of my um, private cloud application portfolio in an in an easy manner. Uh, now, when it comes to service providers, uh, they, it's a different. Uh, it's a it's a different. Uh, it's a different. Uh, use case or so these are service providers that are providing this solution a managed solution to the to the customer so there is a cost management from infrastructure perspective it's not easy uh, we know that service providers and we've been in service providers market for for 20 years now so the the most one of the most important thing is the cost management of the solution uh, and by uh, using our solution in the containerized way of it it makes it easier because we can use we can aggregate many databases in the same infrastructure rather than doing it in the traditional way by doing one node of infrastructure per each uh, database. Um, sovereign cloud, it's uh, uh, important more and more. We see more and more regulations around this. Um, and this is the play for the what we call alternative cloud providers, providing this uh, data locality and giving the possibility to the local markets to have their own uh, databases on top of the, uh, the the on top of data centers that are running into uh, into uh, the territories especially in in the uh, in the emerging markets where we don't see uh, hyperscalers so today um the companies when they want to use mongodb they will go to the hyperscalers and we are giving a possibility to service providers to uh, to do it in the emerging markets um, integration with cloud services, um, we know that a database needs an application, it needs services, uh, it's not easy uh, spinning a database and then connecting it to some application running somewhere. Um, so this is one of the add values for service providers that they can provide a full platform as a service, including all the cloud services that are needed. Uh, plus the MongoDB, so an application and uh, MongoDB, uh, um, uh, MongoDB with the MongoDB database can work with, a, with with great integration, and it can it can it can run uh, smoothly and 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 very good and with a, with a high performance. One of the most struggles we see, especially with service providers who have many uh, more than one region, the multi-region deployments and and replications. Um, it's complicated, especially for the non-SQL databases. Uh, and our solution by default is multi-cloud, by default is multi-region. So it gives that possibility to deploy um, uh, to deploy clusters and as well multi-region databases with backup. So I can have, for example, my database in London and then my backup in the US, or I have uh, my database uh, running in a data center one in the country, and then I can create a replica in data center too, so that I make sure that my uh, business continuity uh, is there. And again, uh, a bit higher in the service provider area from orchestration and automation, because there is a most imp the, there is a very important um, uh, uh, feature there that is billing. So we have a billing engine. It can calculate the, the consumption of the customers and it can help with billing the, uh, the customer and users at the end of the month. Um, so, these are the, the challenges that we see specifically to both sides. There are like uh, common challenges for both uh, uh, for both uh, for both use cases for private and private and, 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 and public cloud migration. Um, migrating a database or migrating an application in general is very complicated, especially if we want to migrate it from some hyperscaler to another hyperscaler from private cloud perspective or in the uh, public cloud sector or in the service provider business migrating a database from a region to another region. Uh, so the, the, we in the solution, we have an effortless cross-cloud migration. It's clicking on a button and, and our friend Theo will show it to us. So clicking on a button, I migrate my MongoDB database from point A to point B. Live migration is supported so that the business continuity is running and, 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 and it is a seamless effort. Um, skills requirement, installing MongoDB is not simple. Um, uh, so, and today we, we are not speaking about uh, 
um, time to market anymore. We are speaking about time to revenue, either for the service provider use case or for the enterprise use case, because these applications are done to uh, to to fix a functional uh, uh, issue. So we need to have solutions that can give us this one-click provisioning and management where I don't spend any more time in creating those stacks. I have uh, my platform, I click on a button, in five minutes I have my database and then my developers can start uh, doing all the big data job that they need to do. Operational complexity, uh, like making sure that everything is running fine, infrastructure, in the traditional way, the more infrastructure you have, the the more issues you have, the more people you need to manage it uh, by aggregating all the, the uh, infrastructure and doing it in a containerized way um, and uh, aggregating this, uh, this, uh, this infrastructure into a smaller number of physical nodes uh, makes it easier from an operational perspective and bringing on top of it this automation makes as well the total cost of ownership better than doing it uh, with uh, with uh, with local uh, with uh, uh, locally with uh, with the hands and the business continuity of course it's uh, uh, one of like the most important uh, track into into this making sure that the databases are running uh, 24 out of 7 without uh, without issues without uh, disruptions everything is working fine Replication is done automatically. My backups are working. If I have an issue on a node, another node can, can take it forward. So having a real enterprise uh, stack that gives me a possibility to do clustered uh, clustering environments, to uh, to use a, a software-defined storage to make sure that I have high availability as well from a storage perspective, uh, making sure that I have a high density as well uh, from a density perspective, and auto-scaling uh, to make sure that my infrastructure is always available. Uh, there are five ways uh, to use MongoDB. Um, so uh, unmanaged service provider, yeah, it's time consuming, uh, difficult uh, to manage, difficult to do, difficult to propose. Uh, business continuity is very complicated, especially when we have uh, multiple regions. Uh, managed service providers that would be coming with uh, and, uh, the, 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 the proposal of the solution would be uh, coming with an additional cost. It would be from a control perspective, uh, limited, uh, you will the, the the MSP will be relying on one uh, on one singular provider. Um, using a DMS, a database management system, it gives you only orchestration. It doesn't bring automation. You need you need still that uh, expertise. You need still to have the people um, uh, to manage those uh, data center, those um, those uh, databases, and as well the auto scalability is not supported. So you won't be having that horizontal and vertical scale scalability. You will be having only like orchestration of your databases, and then DB pass based on Kubernetes, uh, open source uh, templates. You don't have like all the commercial templates. A complex part of production, Kubernetes, after now eight, nine years, uh, is more and more complicated um, to manage, to use, uh, because you are not getting to the container itself. You are going to the orchestration of that container and to find uh, human resources working on Kubernetes, it's um, super expensive. So depending on the region, finding real certified uh, uh, developers uh, that know how to use Kubernetes is uh, a bit, uh, a bit struggle, a bit of a struggle. Um, so how we overcome these four challenges with the database platform uh, DB Pass on 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 virtual application platform? It's production ready. We are making sure that everything is done in the program and is done on the software to make your production go in fine. Either if you are a private cloud in the private cloud or you are an enterprise, or if you are a service provider who wants to propose a MongoDB as a service. Scalability, auto scalability, horizontal and vertical is by default integrated in our solution. It's business ready, a faster go to market and to revenue. Both of them, it's not anymore about go to market. It's uh, we need to have the first dollar faster uh, in either use case. Operations are uh, effortless, infrastructure agnostic. It can run on top of any infrastructure, including bare metal. We don't need uh, like some kind of virtualization or some kind of whatever. Like any infrastructure can can uh, our 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 platform can uh, can run on top of it. A global support, twenty four out of seven, three hundred and sixty five days a year. Uh, full stack platform and fully customizable for service. This is more for service providers who want to put their logos, white label, the uh, control panel, 
Um, so it's fully, fully customizable and uh, the service providers can use. Um, so just to recap what we what I was saying about the solutions uh, and how it uh, implies to uh, MongoDB specifically. So automated provisioning, one-click provisioning. You don't need to, uh, you just need to go to the, uh, to the service UI, click on MongoDB, deploy, and then in five minutes you have it. High availability, it's uh, by default included. It automatically provision any replica of the or cluster or auto clustering, and then it makes sure that redundancy is done uh, automatically. Easy, easy scalability, and we will see it with Theo. Um, you can do vertical scaling, horizontal scaling, uh, with no issues. With uh, with it's a matter of a few clicks. Uh, update. I want to update my software stack. I want to update my MongoDB from six to seven. It's again a matter of three clicks. Secure backups. We have backup, uh, backup, uh, backup functionality integrated into the solution, so you can backup your MongoDB databases in other regions or in other clouds. You can have a, you can have a set in your private cloud, and then you can um, backup in the public cloud or vice versa. Uh, and in the service provider, in the service provider way, you can do like one region for backups and one region for the production and access control. Of course, you give uh, it's a DevOps way of doing things. You give to the end users. Um, the diff or to your developers different access um, uh, um, different access levels so that they can access the database, they can modify, they can see, they can model. Um, so this is the scheme. This is a bit of the architecture. So it's like a virtual application platform and you can install MongoDB containers and you can install them on all the cloud of your choices. It can be a premise, it can be virtual cloud partners because we already have uh, cloud partners around the world, uh, 90 uh, cloud uh, uh, providers uh, that are using uh, virtual application platform across the world. And then you have like a, um, a digital ocean, Vulture or Verge Cloud or the cloud of your choice. And you have all the automation included. Uh, there are no hidden features, uh, latest MongoDB versions, of course, six and seven, five is going end of life, October, 2024. This is why it is not available in our solution. So we're starting from version six and then and then, and then seven, and we enable um, DD, DB pass uh, for enterprise, for private clouds with multi-cloud extensibility. So you can have, um, when you are buying the license directly from MongoDB, you can have your on-premise and then you can have your Azure or, or AWS or whatever uh, cloud of, of your choice. And you deploy your uh, your MongoDBs, uh, uh, your MongoDB databases across the, across the globe. Um, I will stop it here. I tried to make it synthesized and quick to give more time to the demo uh, because it's like one of the most important parts of the webinar. And I would be turning it to Theo, who would be who would be making the demo. And feel free to ask all the questions that you have in the chat. Uh, we will be answering them right after uh, right after the, the the demo. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you, Will. Hello, everyone. Let me switch to the demo. I hope you can see my screen. So for those who are not aware about virtual application platform, as uh, Ahmed said, it's a full stack platform starting from underlying infrastructure. It's having a platform as a service. And after we deliver solutions as a service, I can say it can be varied of them. Uh, we provide out of the box multiple methods on how the user can control, configure, create uh, workloads. Uh, we will see today because of the demo, the DevOps experience, we do have also administration panel with the users. They can centralize, control all their clouds, regions, data centers, hardware groups, and so on. Uh, but because of the meeting of the webinar today, I will not spend time on the platform operator perspective. We will focus on the DevOps experience and for the end user. Uh, so. The users can utilize for advanced user CLI, we have full APIs, but the most well used common uh, way to create workloads is through our uh, wizard. In the wizard, the users can select their programming language and accordingly we uh, have predefined software stacks, certified templates which been managed and continuously integrated and uh, are production ready from our team. And for example, here we extend now, and we are very happy with this, with MongoDB certified stack, 
Uh, I have already created some environments for the purpose to speed up a little bit, but I will show you how we can create the MongoDB workloads. For this phase, as we are just a general available on the, on the initial release, we have the replication cluster production ready. We are already working with sharding and we will also introduce Mongo routers and some other techniques, balancing and so on and so forth. So the user can easily select the, the stack. They can deploy single instance, which it can be standalone MongoDB for development purposes, staging, even for single applications where they do not need high availability and when they do not care a lot for data loss, let's say, in real time. And uh, then the user can easily enable auto clustering. In reality, now we can see that we have minimum three nodes required to start the replication cluster. However, the user can extend as they want as many nodes they need during the creation, but also after they can create, they can scale manually anytime, or as we can see, they can enable horizontal scaling as well. For the purpose of the demo, I will create a new instance. As you can see here, we have uh, multiple choices in which location we want to deploy uh, the, the workload. For our stand here, we have some clouds based, but this can be on premise. It can be uh, different regions on your local uh, provider, or it can be a combination of hybrid environments to combine different uh, purposes. Even if it's this, for example, development environments when you would like to, to migrate to production, or if it can be availability zones, AZA, AZB, AZC, and so on, or even for geo-distributed clusters, it can be different countries, different continents, and so on and so forth. And on the middle, just very quickly, you can see here we have two different ways of resources. We support dynamic resources, and this is very important for public cloud and service providers. Then the user are being only charged when they consume specifically amount of system resources in real time. And <clears throat> I will create this cluster and during the creation, I will be able to demonstrate you a few other things. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have a replication cluster with three nodes and single node with uh, one MongoDB. Some uh, general uh, things we can apply to the MongoDB itself. First of all, it's the backup. We can give uh, the ability to the user to determine their own backup strategy. And most likely they can also create the, their backup storage in different regions. That means it's accommodated by default DR purposes to, don't, to have the data outside of the main region but also it can combine different strategies for from local region for high performance if we want to have hourly, for example, and then we can replicate the weekly in different regions and so on and so forth. So it's very advanced and can be designed in, in multi-layers. Um, for instance, here we have an add-on which it can be installed directly to the MongoDB. We have a, a database backup and restore we can configure our strategy here, for example, if we want to have daily, hourly, weekly, or monthly. And also we can have a custom configuration because if we are, let's say, an international provider and we accommodate users from around the world, maybe they want to configure different time zones to execute their backup policies and flow, and of course we uh, we give specific times and, and uh, they can configure in which location they would like to store their backup and absolutely how much backup rotation they would like to keep. Uh, as we can see already the environment is being created and I will switch back a little bit here to give you an understanding. I already got on my email the admin and the password. So, uh, Virtuoso application platform provides private network, external network directly to the containers. And uh, usually we do not want to expose a database to the public network, of course, for security based on best practices and so on and so forth. 
So as the environment is being created, we have the general settings on the environment level, which we can control our firewall, we can control auto horizontal scaling, we will see in a bit. But the most important part here is we can create endpoints to our database and then we can connect from external to internal. And this is very useful for, of course, for database administrators. I will show you what I mean here. I'm selecting the MongoDB and then I will configure the private port 27017. And just to configure, I don't have any issue on my service. You can see my port running, everything is okay. And then I can take this endpoint and I will switch very quickly my screen to MongoDB Compass. So I hope you can continue to see my screen now. I can easily connect my new endpoint and then I can just add my administration credentials that I have received on my mailbox. And I can connect to the instance. Directly, we can see we have access to the MongoDB. We can see the databases. We can create new collections. And uh, we can start using the solution. It's just in five minutes, we have access. We can import our data. And we can start uh, connecting our applications and microservices that fast. and. We connect it from external to internal without to expose at all our database to the public network. And this is very important, of course, for, for security purposes and availability and so on and so forth. I will come back a little bit to continue with uh, some uh, very important functionality. As we've seen on the presentation, we're speaking scalable ready. What it means scalable ready? Okay, we can scale horizontally, we can scale vertically, this is good, everything is okay, but this is not enough when we're speaking for production. We may have complicated rules, we may have firewall rules, which they need to be uh, uh, auto adapt on user behavior, on system behavior, and so on and so forth. And this is what Virtuoso Application Platform does. For example, we can create new rules and then we can just configure the role that we would like to apply this rule. As we we don't, the they, role, always, they always see the MongoDB dashboard. We don't see the virtual application platform. I'm so sorry for this. You can see it now. Yeah. So we can select the roles and as we scale uh, up or down horizontally, uh, behind the scenes, Virtuos application platform we will go to all the nodes across the cluster and then we will configure all the firewall rules accordingly and dynamically. So we don't need to care anymore about this. It supports built-in load alerts. We have predefined rules, but the user can configure new triggers to get information about some spikes and specific system resources. And of course, it can enable auto horizontal scaling. We can enable this on CPU, memory, network, or to have multiple triggers. And for instance, we can add new nodes when our CPU is gonna be higher than specific amount of percentage for the last five minutes or the last 10 minutes, we can we have full control on our uh, scalable strategy and to avoid uh, paying for more resources and for better resource utilization, we can remove these nodes automatically. Of course, everything is transparency. The user get notification about this kind of events. And also it's been uh, recorded on the historical log. It supports a uh, role-based access. The user can create its own roles. They can give specific permission to specific environment or to specific component. And in this way, the users, they can elaborate across different de departments within an organization, or even if they want to, to invite some external database administrator, developer or something, they can give access to only specific uh, controls with limitations, for example, on billing, on, uh, on deletes and so on, and many other things. For example, network configurations, accessing files, accessing logs and such uh, features. Um, Teo, I have a, I have, we have some questions in the chat just for you to uh, to show it. Um, so, uh, so do you offer point in time recovery? How easy is that to create backup and restore 
to any desired point of point in time that's that's one question mm -hmm. and the second question is ahmed mentioned auto updates can you explain how the mongodb update process goes is there any downtime for my application during the update process mm -hmm. i will explain both of them thank you for the questions uh, it was on plan to to demonstrate these things of course so for the backup uh, the user can configure of course their hourly daily or their own strategy here predefined or custom to specific time and which means these backups they will be taking automatically uh, however the user can backup manually anytime they want before some actions before some updates or uh, anything and definitely they can restore from specific endpoint after yes for the demo, I already have taken one backup before we start. It's retrieving the data now because we have our instance on Google Cloud and our backups are on Valter. So and here we have, for example, the endpoint. It can be multiple endpoints. You can configure your own rotation. It can keep 15, 30, 60, 100 uh, points which you can uh, restore. For the continuously backup process we are going to have enterprise version in the near future which of course mongodb have specific technology to accommodate such needs with specific snapshotting way of course we will enable such advanced uh, things for, for for demanding applications when they cannot even roll back for a few minutes back for the updates purposes <clears throat> there are the red deploy as we call it the red deploy it's been functional with multiple for multiple options for example we may have created today our workloads and in two three months maybe red hat will come with some vulnerabilities on operating system with this way we can redeploy the same image on the same software stacks version, but in reality, it will redeploy the operating system. Everything is going to be up to date. On a single instance, we do have a small downtime, uh, all rollbacks and everything. It's been designed uh, behind the scenes. We do all the validations and everything because, as Ahmed said, Virtuoso is business ready and service provider friendly. That means we do placing all of this production ready techniques to make sure that the product, the workloads, they will be always operated. On the cluster now, we can avoid any downtime because the redeployment works differently. We can configure sequential deployment with delay. That means, and of course, and also we can remove this from the from the DNS and the load balancers as well. It means uh, it will make a red deploy each by one node, and during this process, it will remove it from the DNS CRV as we will distribute the request. Uh, in the near future, we will have also Mongo routers about this. But for now, we are using a built-in uh, DNS methodology for round robin. Uh, it's been removing this from the pool and during the upgrade, it's taking sequential. That means it's node, it's been isolated during this redeployment process, which of course it's a result on zero downtime. And the redeployment also, it's a, it can fully upgrade from six to seven, for example. We do not support downgrade. On application servers, we do support. But on databases, we do not. Of course, it's obvious why we are not allowing this, but upgrade process, it can be. For, for instance, as now MongoDB, it will release soon the eight. We will be able, and the users quickly with a simple click to upgrade from seven to eight. I hope I address your question. Yeah, so so there is, there is a, I will come to your question, Daniel. I would just like, there is a, uh, another um, a question to the que or an add-on to the question that uh, we had about the backup and restore. So there, so th so this is the question. There is no time. Uh, uh, there is no point in time recovery. For example, if I take a backup every hour, I can only restore what has been. For example, if I take a backup at seven p.m., mm -hmm. I can only restore 
the data that I have at 7 p.m. I cannot restore the data that I have at 7.30, for example, or the data that I will be having in 8. Or there is, is there a mechanism to make those snapshots of uh, point in time, like every 20 minutes, every 30 minutes, whatever? It's possible to take backups every 30 minutes and every we can change it every five minutes. It supports also advanced cron top technology. Uh, but this is what I said before, on the MongoDB Enterprise, as we will release in the future, they do have built-in continuous backup policy through snapshotting uh, integrated. And this is where this kind of applications, they need to switch when they need continuous backup policy for very highly, let's say, production applications when they cannot accommodate even one minute data loss. Okay. Yes. So for now, we can do what? Five minutes is the minimum we can do? We, we can configure continuous backup policy, but not uh, in, the, in the same way as uh, MongoDB is doing on enterprise version. Okay. Uh, there is another question from Daniel. I see scaling is based on CPU, memory, and I.O., but can scaling be based on storage, like for a consensus, constantly growing database? Uh, we have vertical scaling on this. For example, uh, our disk, in reality, it's been uh, charged, I can say, and in reality, it's thin provision. You can enable from the beginning two terabyte, three terabyte, and even if you are a service provider and you deliver this to end users, or if you are end user and you consume this on public cloud services, but on Virtuoso application platform, you only been charged for the actual disk space that you are using. With this way, you have elasticity about the uh, disk space. However, anytime you would like uh, after you are in production, you can resize this. It's rebootless and in instance allocation of a new resizing the disk space and the volume. Uh, also, this is happening when you would like to allocate more resources on the MongoDB itself. Uh, our resizes are rebootless and instance. Uh, it's not, for example, like uh, traditional hypervisors where they need to reboot. Some cases we have CPU hot plugs once, but then they cannot extend for a second time. They need to reboot again. Uh, in virtual application platform is different as we are using system containers. They've been operating like a virtual machine in the respect of the management, but they provide the density and the flexibility of the container world. And uh, I would like to note something very important here. Virtuoso is a pioneer on system containers. It's been invented for 23 years, and we are proud of it. Uh, another thing... We have scheduler for improving the TCO and the uh, uh, resource consumption. We do have also scale to zero technology. If you are an organization which you have plenty of workload staging, development, and some databases you don't consume very often, then you can enable to auto hibernate specific environments after they don't have requests, for example, for the last 24 hours. And this it significantly improves uh, the infrastructure utilization. And we have also encrypted connection enabled as a plugin for the MongoDB. This is very useful for, for the clustered environments when we would like to interconnect data across the the MongoDB transactions, we enable SSL and TLS uh, on the cluster itself with a simple click. Uh, we have plenty of things to come in the MongoDB level that includes observability to extend about transactions, MongoDB activities. Uh, Ops Manager it will come in the near future from MongoDB. And uh, as we said already, the sharding Mongo routers, and then we will introduce also replication and sharding together, and also to convert replication cluster to sharding and standalone instance to replication and sharding. We will do this in an auto way. That means inside one platform, 
it can support the whole customer journey. So you can start small, you can stay scale with replication, after you can extend to sharding for more performance, if you have big data and you would like to achieve uh, higher results, and you can manage all of this with uh, high availability, multi-region deployments, and also we support migration, as Ahmed said, for example, here, I can take my instance from Google and I can just migrate it to AWS. We do have different methods on multi-region. We can deploy isolated regions, we can create universal regions, we can create global regions, and also we can connect inter-cluster within regions. This is very useful for, let's say, if we would like to apply in uh, availability zones, we can create clusters that it's been operating as one data center. And when the latency it's allow us to do such designs, when the latency does not allow such designs, we can create a, a VPN so the users they can, sorry, the containers they can utilize the same private network. And then we can migrate across clouds without uh, any reconfiguration, even on the network level. In the same way, we can just migrate simple containers to different clouds and we can distribute our workloads on different locations for high availability with no single point of failure, even on the DC level or even on the cloud level. And these are all possible with the Virtuos application platform. Uh, we have many things to do. Unfortunately for this demo, we do not have a lot of time. I would need to leave a little bit of QA. Very quickly, two things. We have marketplace which you can not only create cluster topologies, auto clustering and so on, but we have uh, predefined uh, solutions. For example, here, as we will introduce uh, very, uh, very soon the MongoDB, I will show you that we have uh, multi-region, for example, on different databases. The user can just select different regions, the topology, and then they can create across different clouds with single click. And also we have SQL load balancing between different regions by default. This is very useful for enterprises and for demanding applications and geo distributed. And finally, I will close. All of this beautiful part has been built uh, on our, based on our cloud scripting, which you can have access, you can full customize, you can extend your logic and you can do many things automated based on system events. For example, when the user resize, when the user stop, when the user restart, or when an alerted came, you can extend your own logic, your own function, functions, and you can have access to the core engine to develop and your own logic based on your own use cases and your own needs. It's a very powerful tool. And uh, all of these are being built based on this logic, which it can also utilize Dockerite packets, and then we can extend it with different ways to improve it and to make it more ready and scalable ready and business ready, as we mentioned before. Thank you very much. I hope it was a nice demo and let's move to QA. Thank you, Theo. Let me reshare my screen. Thanks for the demo. Thanks for the all cool, all cool features that you showed us. And if anyone has uh, any uh, or wants to deep dive technically into the solution, we would be happy to schedule a demo with Theo, uh, where we can go uh, to the to the to the um, uh, specificities of the solution. So as we were saying, solution is uh, built for uh, databases administrators with all the management and orchestration uh, that uh, we have built in the tool for private cloud and as well for service providers who wants to. Uh, create new revenue streams and propose MongoDB as a service. Uh, it would be easy. Um, uh, it would be easy to uh, to create that uh, that market and and move uh, and move forward uh, with it. Um, we uh, so to, uh, how I will I will come to your question, Damien. Um, just like I finish this, and then I would be asking. I, I would be and will we will be will be helping us on on the answer of this question. Um, so the three ways to deploy virtual application platform, uh, deploying on your own infrastructure, multi-cloud, uh, in the case you are in a private cloud, the setup view, we can deploy it. Uh, it's a infrastructure agnostic. 
um, and we can you can start and you can do it easily and quickly. Um, uh, get hosted MongoDB from one of our partners, uh, excluding the hyperscalers, of course. Um, so we have all the partners, uh, virtuoso partners and uh, virtuoso technical and cloud alliances. Um, who or if you are a virtuoso partner and a service provider who wants to start proposing MongoDB as a service, feel free to uh, contact your account manager and he will be taking you towards uh, all the steps that are needed that are quite simple in order to get uh, all the templates uh, to uh, to start MongoDB uh, business. Um, that's it. You can get started here. You can... Uh, uh, scan the QR code, but before this, William, I have a question from Damien. Damien is uh, one of our successful uh, service providers. Uh, and it's mainly about uh, why going going with it, like uh, coming with the price rather than doing it in, a, in, a fa in an old fashioned way. So the question is this, so far, all the details pre presented appear to be available for a customer simply deploying MongoDB on a VPS or Docker image on top of Virtuoso application platform. Are there any benefits to a customer paying for the MongoDB license rather than continuing to use the SP SSPL license? So a customer who will come to a cloud provider buying a VM, installing an SSPL license versus the automated way with Virtuoso application platform, if you can help us with this question. Yes, I can answer it, but I'm not certain I understand the question specifically. So let me try to answer it in two ways. One is SSPL is not a license. It's a it's a feature that we added into our software in 2018 to uh, throttle back the hyperscalers for using Mongo uh, authentic products, um, which stopped before 4.0, which was the release. And so you can look on our website about the definition of what SSPL is. Um, but I think what the question is referring to is using that license, which would be, you know, at this time, almost six years old, uh, to would that be better than, you know, using a more current version of Mongo, which would be offered by Virtuoso, which would be anything past four all the way up to seven, which... Uh, Teo showed earlier in the demo. So I'm not certain if that answers the question or not, um, but it seemed to be twofold, one around the actual licensing itself, and then whether, you know, it should be deployed or self-managed or on Virtuoso. Hopefully I was able to answer that question. Damien, do you have any uh, comments? And I'm happy to share the link of the SSPL uh, feature that we added back then to the uh, to the chat window. Yeah, if you can, if you can, if you can add it to the chat, that would be great. So that's uh, because Damien is one of our service providers, uh, successful service providers, and uh, they want like when addressing the market, they need to understand how they can as well and uh, answer those questions from from their uh, end users. Because the cost will won't be the same. Like someone putting it on open source on the VPS is not the same as buying a license of MongoDB and And also I would like to note something here, please. Uh, our MongoDB, it's not the open source MongoDB. Virtuoso, it's enabling MongoDB as a service. It's different from just take it from the repo and install it manually. It's a huge difference, specifically for operations and for human errors and so on and so forth. But uh, the most important part is that uh, on MongoDB as a service, as we're enabling now for users and service providers, it's a joint venture with MongoDB itself. We have support that can accommodate different situations than the traditional open source, of course. And uh, also, we will have the enterprise version as well, which it's uh, forbidden as far as I know, maybe I'm mistaken here, to be used by just install it on locally. It should uh, come with license, this one. But still, uh, our MongoDB as a service is not the usual open source that you can install it manually as a self-managed 
on your own Docker or your, your own VPS. Okay, good. So we arrived to the end of our webinar. Thank you uh, to everyone who joined us. It was a nice session. Thanks for the for the for the questions. Uh, we will uh, be definitely getting back to you with the recording of the webinar we, and as well uh, contacting you to see what uh, would be your uh, next steps uh, around this. Um, so thank you again. Thanks, Will. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for this uh, great partnership. And thank you, Theo, for the demo. And thanks as well, uh, Tatiana. Um, she was like, she is the one uh, working behind the shade, um, making sure that everything is working uh, properly. Thanks, everyone. Thank and you I wish much. you a great, uh, a great evening, morning, uh, or uh, night if you are in the Asia. Thank you all. We thank you. It. Have a good one. Bye bye. bye, -bye.